Hello everyone, this is Noah and John, and we are from Urban Digs, and we are talking Manhattan. And John, we're getting into the 13th week here, man. People are just getting on edge. Um, it's, it's, it's a messed up time in the world right now. The world's on fire. Um, so many horrible things um, going on. But, but listen, we're talking about Manhattan real estate right now. Um, we're at the bottom of the destruction in the Manhattan real estate. I've been talking about the three phases. Phase one was destruction. Phase two was normalization which basically is just the, uh, the, the change in the, in the slope of the destruction. That's all that means. Um, and then ultimately a recovery, which of course is not happening. So we're kind of in that, that phase where we're trying to see things normalize. We're seeing it in new listing activity. Um, that's starting to come back, but we're not seeing it in contract activity. Um, when I did my weekly check on Friday, we came in at 30, which was the lowest that um, we've been at. And that's a little disappointing. So I'm hoping um, that this week marks the bottom and we come forward. But um, that's what I'm seeing out there. What are you seeing, Johnny? No, that's, and then that's exactly right. And I feel like the sellers are going to come back to this market before the buyers. Buyers are sort of waiting for the all clear before agents can sell property, show property again. Uh, I just don't think there are going to be that many sight unseen deals, especially when you're talking about, uh, and Nadia can talk to this, estate sale co-ops. Uh, you, you just right. you don't know what you're going to get. You got to get in there. You got to kick the tires. And until we have that, I wouldn't expect contract signs to really go above that de minimis amount that we've seen for the last month and a half. Yeah, I hate to say I agree with you. So, I mean, let's let's see what happens. Um, and I want to talk about the rental markets too. So we got we got two good ones here. We got we got Nadia uh, Bartolucci and we got Rachel Altschuler from Element here. Um, combined 25 plus years of experience. These are a very active team um, in both Brooklyn and Manhattan. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Awesome. So listen, um, we usually talk sales on this show, but I want to start out with rentals and get at least one rental element out of the way, and then we'll go to sales. So do me a favor, and um, both of you guys give me your take on what's going on with the rental market. Um, is, it, is it active? Um, I'm hearing it's active. Is this true? Is it not true? What's up? It is very, very active. Uh, we I are shocked. Yeah. Yep. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, I We are actually shocked at how active the rental market is. We are, funny enough, getting asking price. We are getting, in one case, we got over asking. And it's all from virtual tours. It's all from videos. Um, we're having the cooperation of tenants. We're having the cooperation of owners and landlords to help get the deal done. And it's really incredible to see how everyone comes together. Nadi, what were you going to say? No, I was just going to 100% agree with Rachel. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have uh, tenants and landlords uh, go in so we can respect uh, the current uh, executive order given by Cuomo and we're receiving videos and every rental deal that we've done in the past three weeks has been only uh, based on video site unseen. And we have been fortunate enough in a lot of cases to rent things after just one or two showings. We are getting that full asking price. Wow. Um, in addition to that, you know, I, I'd say that that is uh, reflected both in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We uh, have very large portfolios in, in both boroughs and we are seeing no slowdown. And this is the $2,000 rental all the way up to the $8,000 rental. And what about concessions? Could you give me any color on what's going on with concessions? Absolutely. The concessions are high. We encourage all our owners to offer no fee. And in some cases, one month free. Uh, mm -hmm. It really depends on the segment of the market. Uh, anything under 5,000 should 100% be no fee. Mm -hmm. um, net effective to, to us doesn't really get the job done which to everyone really means if somebody's advertising 6,000, but it's really 7,800, right. that effective, it feels wrong to a lot of mm -hmm. renters to do it that way. So we really discourage doing the net effective rent and advertising what it really is. Gotcha. Um, I mean, so you're not getting any pushback from any of your, your landlords on, on giving concessions. They're pretty much all agreeing that, uh, that we'll have to either give a concession through, through, like you said, the free month or one month or just straight out lower the price. Are, are they choosing to lower the price? Like in general, like, like what's the mixture here of lowering the price versus concession? Um, I, I think that that, you know, going back to what Rachel said, you know, really, you know, 
has a lot to do with the, the rental price. I think that a landlord is very interested in keeping that rental price high, right. uh, especially on those apartments that are sub $5,000. I am not seeing a lot of concessions on some of our larger room town apartments, uh, mainly because they offer their own private outdoor space, which as we know is very coveted right now, or they're very in very close proximity to a park. Um, mm -hmm. But I am seeing not a huge percentage off the asking rent, Rachel. I, I think at the most, you know, maybe, you know, four to seven percent in some cases, or we have that baked into some other kind of concession, like a move in fee or something, or a move in credit, excuse me. Uh, we're seeing that in some cases as well. Um, it's a very, very unique market in the sense that because of what's happened over the past 13 weeks, you know, people are truly evaluating what they are currently renting and determining if it really can work for them, you know, long term, or if it's time to, you know, rent in something else. So we are seeing a lot of people bridge up from that one bedroom rental to, you know, one and a half bedroom or two bedroom because, you know, work from home situations are right. becoming more acceptable in our new norm, if you will. So we're seeing a lot of those transitions and then the transitions where um, landlords are not able to offer concessions, but are very, being very understanding to the new norms are a lot of lease break scenarios that are happening right now. Right. And landlords are being amenable to allowing us to, you know, go in and help those tenants, you know, rent, not with any rent change, but, you know, we have been very successful um, in doing that in many cases. And so additionally, the only hurdle we are finding is actually managing agents or the board, if it's a condo or co-op, as well as, you know, maybe a building policy of not allowing a move in or a move out. Th those right. are the biggest hurdles. Not so much pricing. Landlords get it. They, they respect what a broker says for the most part, and they just want to get it rented. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, great. Let's, let's flip to the sales side. Um, are you guys bringing on uh, new exclusives or what's going on there? Yes, <laughs> I, the next, the next thirty. You're laughing, so this, so this is probably going to be something, something big. <laughs> yeah, I think Rachel and I had our, our weekly uh, Monday morning call, and we just started it by laughing. Um, the next forty-five days are going to be uh, very busy for the Altula Bar Bartolucci team, and I know a lot of other agents across uh, the map. Um, we're in a unique situation right now where we see the light. We don't know what the light at the end of the tunnel means, but uh -huh. there's obviously pent up demand to people that want to jump into the market and purchase. You know, rates are low. There are people that are selling for a variety of different reasons. A lot of the sales um, that I'm bringing on and then I'll let Rachel speak on, on her sales are need-based moves, moves that were happening, you know, no matter if, if COVID came into the picture or not. And they have to get, you know, their apartments and townhomes on the market for their own personal reasons. How many were you talking about here? Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Five? Ten? Dozen. Ten to fifteen. Yeah. 10 to 15. Okay, great. So, so, oh man, I hope this is a good sign. I've, so sellers are starting to come back a little bit. How are you guys dealing with pricing? Rach, you want to start? You want me to start? Sure. Yeah. No pricing. Um, it really depends on the seller. It depends on, you know, how motivated if they need to unload and mm -hmm. also if there's a tenant in place. Um, and how easy we can get access to getting a video. And also, um, are they leaving the city? Is it an investment property? Are they cashing out to buy an, uh, you know, an investment property or 1031 exchange? Mm -hmm. there's, there's so many variables. I mean, pricing right now is, it's difficult and it's case by case. We can't say that, oh, you need to be this percentage under market value. The average discount we're seeing right now is seven to 8%. Mm -hmm. Although we've seen 15% off on developers who want to unload or want to hit a 15% mark um, or a 50% mark for banks. So right. we're seeing, you know, new development is a lot easier to understand what the discount is going to be. For resales, it's hard to understand the discount because you have to really get an offer for, to understand their motivation. Right. Well, let me let me ask you this, Nadia. Um, are your sellers understanding of this situation, and are they 
willing to say, all right, my, my place is probably worth less money than it was three months ago. Yes, is the broad answer. Um, I, I think to get granular on it, you know, um, on a couple different levels is my need-based sellers that were going to be selling anyway this year understand and you know i roll my eyes when i say it but it really is true uh pricing is is definitely becoming more of an art than a science if we are priced too high the phone is not going to ring the emails are not going to come so you really have to price it very competitively with what has recently closed i would say in the past three to four months. Anything mm -hmm. that's closed prior to that, we were exiting a very, very robust market where there were a lot of bidding wars, where there was uh, a lack of inventory. And now that we are entering a different type of market, the types of sellers that are on the market are need-based. Uh, they, in some cases, need these proceeds to bridge into their house that they were going to be buying outside of the city anyway, something that they were thinking of doing in the past one, the next one to three years, but are now moving that up because what if this rears its ugly head again? They want to be settled in, you know, with the house in their backyard. So I'm having a lot of my sellers not be aspirational in their pricing tactics, but being very realistic given the current situation that we're in. And in addition to that, every deal from start to finish is undoubtedly going to take longer. There's no expediting it, as Rachel said, with managing agents, you know, some working from home, not having access to their office in the same capacity or at the same volume of employees that they did in the past. Things are going to take longer, so you have to brace for that, and as a result, price it strategically if your intention is to truly move. And I'll add on comps before um, we go to Johnny here. Um, I The comps right now, Acris is not is not functioning at full capacity. Um, so, so if you guys want comps, I mean, we usually see hundreds coming in and you're seeing tens kind of coming in. So we're at, we're at 20% capacity in terms of accuracy. So again, if you're expecting to be like, oh, I can't wait to see all these COVID trades file in and become public record. Yeah, you're going to have to wait a while because all that stuff before COVID is still in the system and pipeline. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were talking about how every day changes. You know, if you talk to a seller a week ago, the, the number can change today, you know, yeah. between the news, uh, the numbers that are going on in hospitals and the sentiment. And then there's seasonality. You know, what used to be a spring market is now a summer market. And yeah. then you have the election approaching. So there's, it's, it's really on a day to day. I spoke to a seller yesterday. I quoted her a number. I don't know if that number is going to be the same next week. Right. right. And yeah. then, you, then, then you have Manhattan versus Brooklyn. So, you know, typically Manhattan, we have a lot more data. We have a lot more comps at our disposal. Brooklyn with the, with two different listing systems, sometimes the listings are in one, not in the other. And the comps are just a little more opaque uh, in general. So I'm just, let me just pitch this out there. What are you guys seeing in Brooklyn? What, what markets are hot? What markets are sort of not? Uh, I understand there's a lot of unrest in Brooklyn right now. Um, how is that affecting the market? And I'm um, just curious to your thoughts. Sure. Um, I, I can say that the, the under million dollar apartment that offers a two bed is always going to be in you know, peak demand in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I have still seen uh, bidding wars in some of these uh, pockets, uh, cooperatives, you know, you keep your monthly carry low. Uh, people want to bridge in and be in Brooklyn. They're done with Manhattan. They've been renting, you know, in a one bedroom in Manhattan. They're ready to get out here and get a little more space. Uh, the other type of apartment that is very coveted and, and newly desirable in Brooklyn more than ever are apartments that offer private outdoor space, mm -hmm. a terrace, you know, a duplex with the garden or a duplex with the rooftop. And if one can swing it, definitely a brownstone. You know, we were in a market where people, if they had that, you know, two to four million dollar budget roughly, or oh, what can I do? Should I have a luxury experience, you know, buy something in an elevator building? No, now it's, I want to buy something in a townhouse and just be responsible for my own space and my family and not worry if this COVID situation, you know, revs up again. We're seeing a lot of that throughout Brooklyn right now. That's interesting. And I think that sort of leads into my next question, which is, you know, we talk about, you know, where are the discounts and where are sort of the premiums? It sounds like the premium end 
is the townhouse and the, the, the private outdoor space. Does that mean conversely that the discounts then are sort of the one bedroom studio kind of thing in, inside? Not, not necessarily Brooklyn, but just in general? I'm going to say, oh yeah, I'm going to say it's actually the studios, the small one bedrooms, and also anything with higher monthlies. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of our buyers in general want the low monthlies. Tax abatements are hard to find now, but I mean, it's incredible how high, especially co-ops, the maintenance have just climbed and climbed. So the rates are low and they also want the low monthlies. Um, and then you're talking about investors who are looking to score a deal right now. They're incredibly focused on the monthlies. Mm -hmm. What about buyers that are, that are, what do you say to a buyer that's like, all right, I'm going to bid 20, 25% below that, that. That's how I look at this market. I'm a buyer at, at this level way below. Um, what would you say to that person right now? I mean, I would say, you know, having the courage to put an offer on the table in these uncertain times is a starting place. You know, I, you know, would also give my honest opinion to them of, of what I think the chances were that they were going to, you know, receive a counter or that there was going to be traction on the offer. That's obviously case by case, you know, with what right. type of property that is. We're seeing a lot of that um, attitude towards new development where, oh, they need to get rid of them anyway. Let's just, you know, put a very low offer and see what happens. You know, that's not necessarily the case, you know, just because, you know, a development has X many units that still need to sell. It doesn't mean that a developer, even in this market, is, is desperate. Yeah. And, you know, what I encourage my buyers to do, and it depends on the level. If they're seasoned and they're just trying to scoop a deal, they know that it can go either way. If they're a first-time buyer, you know, I say baptism by fire, get in, get educated, understand what's going to happen. And then from there, you know, if you really do have a need-based purchase, we'll make it happen. But, you know, on the receiving end where, you know, the past, you know, 18 months, you know, you get a, a low ball offer, if you will, like that, you know, if someone's like, oh, are you crazy? I'm not going to present this to the sponsor. No, no, no. Now yeah. it's, okay, let's present it. Let's decide how we can strategically counter to find out number one, if they're real and not just the broad term bottom feeder. You know, there are ways of navigating this market, which is really going to shake out seasoned agents that have been through these swings before versus people that are used to making quick money of the past three years. Yeah, Nadia, I, I think you nailed it. I mean, I, I love how you said seasoned versus non-seasoned. And if you're a seasoned buyer in New York City, you know already, you know that, that you know, if you're going to be bidding on five properties and you're bidding 25% below five properties, maybe one out of the five will respond. Yeah. Maybe. Um, if, you're, if you're not seasoned and you just, and you're a first time, you know, which is okay. Um, you got to learn somewhere. Again, you're going to get your feet wet and you're going to notice real quick. I mean, that's why these agents, you know, John, we have these agents on here. They, they know, you know, um, you got to manage expectations and let them know you may not get a response. So. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, you know, normally when we talk about the market, we talk about, all right, if, if something's not selling, it's really, it's one of three reasons. It's either, it's either a property problem, it's a price problem, or it's a market problem. Yeah. And yeah. frankly, right now we have a market problem. Uh, we have a price problem because there's no days on market and prices are still sort of elevated compared to sort of the, the, the supply di di demand dynamics. They're sort of, you know, yeah. you can't really see it. So it's hard to negotiate. Uh, and at the same time, you could have a property problem. You could have, uh, as Rachel was saying, a smaller studio, one bed that's just sort of in an enclosed area and that not a lot of people want to bid on. So these low bids that are coming in, I mean, really, it's incredibly seller specific. If the seller has to move it, they're going to be looking to go low. But if not, I don't see any reason why they would want to negotiate against themselves until buyers can actually come back to the market. I and think, I think that's what, a, a, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's what they're waiting for. That's all. Yeah. I think what we're what no one's talking about is New York City is mostly co-ops, right? It's over 70% yeah. co-ops. And when you're dealing with co-ops, you're dealing with boards that won't approve a buyer if the price is too low. That's right. So even if a seller needs to unload, as a seasoned agent, you have to educate the buyers, educate the sellers to say, yeah, I'd love to get you that 20% discount even a 10% discount, but you're going to spend three months with time, money, and stress to get to a board interview only for them to deny you. Yeah. Rock on. And, and not only that, from, from those looking to track what, what this COVID destruction really looked like from a price action standpoint, 
take that advice into account um, because the, the condo price per square foot market specifically is probably going to show this true downturn because of what you said, you're going to have a lot of co-ops that, that are going to have some deals in place that are not going to get approved because they adversely impact shareholder on price. It's happening yeah. before. And, yeah. and let me just take it a step further. So let's say we do have an accepted offer and now we're sort of in this COVID situation. I'm curious if you guys have encountered any renegotiations uh, and what those have looked like. Yeah, we recently had one uh, high end one, a little over 7 million and they renegotiated just as COVID started mid-March we gave them 10% and we are about to close. So, and the sellers were happy to agree to 10%. What price point was that? 7 million, a little over 7 million. Yep. So is it, would you say 10% is probably in that higher price point, but in the lower price points, it probably wouldn't be that high? A hundred percent. Yeah. So a lot of times the attorneys we work with and the brokers when dealing with their clients, we encourage them to wait because time is our friend. And if we all wait, instead of giving that concession, we say to the seller, let's just delay the closing because who knows what the world's going to look like in 60 days. Right. Hey, let me ask you this quick question. Um, In terms of buyers out there, is it a true statement to say that buyers want to play in this game? They just want to view property. Correct. It definitely is a statement. And, you know, I think the beauty of this tumultuous market is you have real buyers out there and you have real sellers out there. The time in which we were thrilled to have a broker's open or an open house and fill the room and tell our sellers, we had 20 people come. This is great. Now it's a handful, but that handful is serious. It's a big difference. One of my townhouses yesterday, we had a uh, appropriate social distance showing we arranged with Zoom with the sellers. And you know, that was one person that called on the listing and already, you know, we have a follow-up Zoom in the works because right. they are real. They have been in a rental, the lease is coming due, they do want to make this transition. Yeah. So really are engaging with a very different quality of buyer in this market. They are serious. They are pre-approved. They are ready to go. Yeah. And one really good statistic for us to know is, is our contact at the bank said that mortgage applications are up 17%. That shows everyone that everyone's prepping to move. They're all going to be out of the gates at the same time. Right. And there's a pent up demand. That's going to be really strong. We're hopeful that that spring market is going to move to maybe a mid summer market. And everyone's going to try to lock in before the end of the year to take advantage of the low rates and all the inventory. It's basically to just going to be the 2020 market. I cannot yeah. wait. All right. So let's, we're getting running out of time here. I got one last question for my viewers, new developments, new developments, because I know you guys do deals there. Are they easier or are they harder to deal with right now? That's a good question. Yeah. I'm going to say that, Uh, It depends on the developer. That's probably the best way to say it. As a generalization, I'm going to say for me working with our buyers, it is easier. They are, it's a spreadsheet, numbers have to make sense, and you're not dealing with an emotional seller who's maybe there's ego involved or there's a co-op board. It's a lot easier on so many levels. Um, especially with cash buyers. So I don't know if Nadia agrees, but I I personally think that new development is easier. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree. And and I think that the, you know, we also work on the sales team for luxury development uh, in Brooklyn. We're on the the Quay Tower sales team. And we definitely have down to a science, our virtual tour. And, you know, I, I think that it really truly engages buyers. And, you know, obviously there are times when, when, you know, mandates are lifted, they do want to come back and visit the building, but we are able to give them a thorough analysis of the building, you know, of the floor plans available and circling back to what Rachel said, you know, price ranges, you know, you know, developers have numbers that must make sense as, as Rachel said, and right. you know, people are welcome to come in and, and lowball and, and do whatever they want. But, you know, knowing that there are certain benchmarks and numbers and comparables already set, 
you know, it also is awakening and, you know, you can only push the envelope so far to try to strike a deal. You know, you have to be within that range as well. Right. Makes complete sense. This has been great. Thank you guys so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Rachel, Altschuler, Nadia Bartolucci from Elemen. You guys stay safe. You guys be well. And again, I appreciate your time. Thank you. So Thank you so much. Thank you so much. From everyone, this is Noah and John. We are from Urban Digs. This was Talk in Manhattan. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, John. Bye, Noah. Bye, guys. Thank you.